A car careens from a busy city street onto the curb, shattering a bus shelter and possibly the life of the young father waiting inside. We have blood around the liver. Let's go. Today, millions of people innocently go about their daily routines, but for a few, the day brings a different fate, tragically altering the course of their lives forever. At Sunnybrook and Women's College Hospital, the trauma team springs into action with the call of a freak accident that leaves a young man's life in question. We have essentially an uh, unfortunate young, young boy who's waiting at a bus stop uh, to go home and basically the driver ran into the bus shelter. 23-year-old Christopher Turrell was sent flying into the air. When EMS arrived, this young father of two was found still and silent, face down on the ground. Okay, talk to me. Run over, face down. Definitely has a head injury, ultrasound, definitely as fast as possible. Oh, yes, father? When the car smashed into Chris, it shattered both his legs and sent him hurtling through the air. It is obvious to the team that he has suffered a massive head injury. But what has trauma team leader Dr. Chugtai worried is indications of a serious internal bleed. Oh yeah, for sure, yeah. Oh my god, definitely. We have blood around the liver. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure some help. What the ultrasound reveals isn't good. The alarming volume of blood around Chris's liver is definite evidence of a life-threatening bleed in his abdomen. But the source remains unknown. It's critical that the team find out where the bleeding is coming from, as Chris's future grows dimmer with every passing minute. Dr. Chugtai needs to know what Chris's true blood pressure is, and the team races to get an internal read of his pressure using an arterial line. If it's low, it means the bleeding in his abdomen is severe, and Chris will require immediate surgery. I don't have a pressure yet. I'm not getting a pressure. Mm -hmm. Well, if this pressure's not good, we're going straight to the OR. And... I'll try again. The nurse tells us that she can't measure blood pressure, we start getting worried. His brain is not tolerating this blood pressure. We've got to fix this fast. Any minutes of low blood pressure or low oxygen supply to the brain is, is not good. We just don't want that. And a few minutes of not having enough oxygen, the brain cells start to die. So he suffered massive injuries, major head injury, uh, major abdominal injuries. He's bleeding in his abdomen. He may be bleeding in his head. So all these things together, it's a pretty critical situation. He's, uh, definitely his life is in danger, that's for sure. At Sunnybrook, Dr. Chugtai and his team desperately fight to save Christopher Turrell's life. It has been only 20 minutes since this young father of two was struck by a speeding car. Now the team frantically tries to insert an arterial line to find an accurate blood pressure. Blood pressure is normal, then he goes to CT first. Blood pressure is low, he goes to the water. Come on. I'm getting like 60 over 40 at best. 60 over 40? At best, but I'm not going to. You think it's 60 over 40, we're going to the OR? At best, at best. You never know. Can you call the OR, please? With Chris's blood pressure alarmingly low and precious seconds ticking away, Dr. Chugtai decides he must risk an operation to find and stop the source of Chris's internal bleeding. Can I tell them we have an unstable uh, pedestrian hit by a car, low blood pressure, positive fast, set up for a laparotomy? But fortune once again turns cruel. An operating room will not be available for five minutes. Am I doing just a laparotomy? What, 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 as, as opposed to what? Can I have the guy wire the dark line? He's unstable, he has a positive fast, as soon as possible. Chris is now living on borrowed time. His low blood pressure is threatening his already damaged brain. The longer it takes to determine the head injury, the greater the chance of permanent damage. 
Finally, Chris catches a break. Hey, Tyler, yeah. We're gonna need. Oh, no, no, no. 117. It's calling. 117. Excellent. Perfect. Okay, the team finally gets in an arterial line and can now get an accurate blood pressure reading. The average for a healthy person is 120 over 80, and Chris clocks in with 117. A very lucky number for someone in his condition. Blood pressure is good. Excellent. Keep okay. running the fluids, though. Yeah. Well, we're going to get a CT of the head. If he stays stable, we may even scan his abdomen and see what's going on in there. Just call the OR back and say, we're going to go to CT first, OK? Chris is now stable enough to go to CT, where the team can discover the true extent of his injuries. Let's go. But Dr. Chugtai's decision is risky. If Chris's condition falters while in the CT scan, the result could be deadly. So it's a little bit of a gamble to come to CT scan, but we think it's worth it. We're not equipped to resuscitate him. That's either the trauma room or the operating room. We can just keep his pressure above 100. We'll get some scans and know exactly what's going on. Although Chris's blood pressure is stable enough now, his lucky numbers could change at any second. At Sunnybrook and Women's College Hospital, the trauma team battles to save the life of young father Christopher Turrell after he was crushed by an out-of-control car. Dr. Chugtai decides to rush him to CT and scan him for internal injuries. A risky move, for if his unstable blood pressure drops, he could suffer permanent brain damage or die. Okay, just keep his pressure above 100. We'll get some scans and know exactly what's going on. The team will do the vital scans and then rush Chris to the OR. They have no idea what the scans will reveal, and the worst-case scenario hovers silently over the tangle of tubes and wires. So the worst-case scenario is he's suffering irreversible damage to his brain that no matter what we do afterwards won't, won't rectify the situation. Things take a turn for the worse, and the team's fear is realized. Chris's blood pressure drops to a dangerous 86. This is a good art line tracing. We're happy with that. Yeah. I'm getting tacky kind of, it, You know also. what? It, it started to drop as soon as we left. Yeah. Like as soon as we took them off level one, I've got two here. I'll put them all out. Our worst, our worst nightmare is uh, what's kind of happening here is a patient who we make a decision is stable enough to go to the CT scan, and then while he's in the CT scan room, he drops his pressure. There's one thing, what's the cause of that? Uh, in, in other words, is he bleeding inside his abdomen? Because you won't bleed enough in your head to drop your blood pressure. But the bad thing about the blood pressure is that uh, his brain is not getting adequate perfusion. So we need to get that pressure up. It's critical that the team raises Chris's blood pressure. They'll do this by pumping units of blood into his dying body, hoping to raise his blood pressure and strengthen his hold on life. The team's labors pay off, and Chris's blood pressure rises. But they're left wondering for how long. Right now, I'm worried, actually, that uh, he keeps dropping his blood pressure. And there's one thing, what's the cause of that? His brain is not getting adequate perfusion. When you have that, in addition to the original brain injury, then bad prognosis. So we're going to scan everything, scan his brain, scan his uh, chest, his abdomen, his pelvis, get a you know, good feel for what's going on, what's bleeding where and how much, and then make some decisions as to which operation he needs. Hello. Yeah. The most important scan in this guy is his head. Stay on this side of the yellow line. Yeah. Finally, the scans reveal the severity of Chris's brain injury. So far, the CAT scan of the head doesn't show any uh, focal bleed, any bleed on one particular side or anywhere. So it's like a diffuse injury, which is actually worse. It's good in terms of he doesn't need an operation. It's bad in terms of the fact that you don't see the injury on the scan, so you can't do anything about it. So neurologically, you'll just have to observe him, let him wake up, come off the sedation drugs, and see you know, if he wakes up and when he wakes up, how good his neurologic function is. It's a wait and see game. With no immediate course of action available to them, all the team can do for Chris's battered brain now is help save his body and find the source of his dangerous internal bleeding.
32 minutes ago, Christopher Turrell was rushed to Sunnybrook and Women's College Hospital after a horrible freak accident. Now this young father of two is lying unconscious with a severe brain injury. So far, the CAT scan of the head doesn't show any uh, focal bleed, any bleed on one particular side or anywhere. Well, you don't see the injury on the scan, so you can't do anything about it. It's not what doctors wanted to see, and with nothing left for them to do for his brain, the team must hope for the best and now try to save his battered body. So the next most immediate concern is where is he bleeding in the abdomen and does it mandate an operation? It's like all mastering. And then right away, the first cut to the abdomen came out, we saw right away the spleen was ruptured. Oh, it's against the wall. Not good. So, scan shows that he has uh, basically a ruptured spleen. That's what was causing the bleeding in the abdomen that we saw in the ultrasound. All right, let's okay. do it. Let's do it. Okay. Can you call the OR? Yeah. Perfect. Get the plus one ready. Let's do it. Let's go. Nice, please. Diaphragm looks perfect, live right low, the liver looks perfect, all that is fine. Big uh, laceration in the spleen, as we need. Let's do it now. Okay, we're gonna take out the spleen now. Here's the spleen, any laceration, basically very injured, it's out. The splenectomy was a success and has stopped Chris's internal bleeding. But Dr. Chugtai's work is not over. He still must talk to Chris's mother who has been anxiously waiting for news of her only child. I mean, he took a hit to the head. You know, he's had trauma. He had only one injury in the abdomen. And we checked everything since we went to the operating room. And his spleen was almost, you could say, like a ruptured spleen. It had several lo big lacerations that were bleeding. So we surgically removed the spleen. The bleeding stopped. We checked everything else, every single organ in the abdomen. Things look good. So the brain scan, there's no bleeding in there. There's no blood in the brain. There's no operation needed, so we're just going to have to observe and see what happens and what his neurologic function is. Hopefully he wakes up, moves everything, and you know, the tube's able to come out, he's able to breathe on his own, and he can recover from all these injuries. That's what we're hoping for. The first 24, 48 hours are very critical. He's dead. He's up north for the weekend. Is it critical that I have him come down now? I would say it would be best for him to be here with you. Yeah. Okay. The trauma team has done all they can. Only time will tell if this young father will live to see his daughters again, or if he'll even be able to recognize their faces should his mind be reduced to rubble by the crushing blow to his head. One month after a freak accident sent Christopher Turrell to the trauma unit, he's still coming to terms with the aftermath of his massive head injury. Chris, you probably don't remember this, but how you got to become in the hospital is that you were in a bus shelter and you got hit by a car. There's weakness from the spinal cord injury and then this abnormal reflex activity, which may be coming from the head injury, we're not 100% sure. You're Thank you very work. much. Lots for you guys are good workers. Thank you. Thank you guys. Four months later, Chris is making progress, but still struggles along the path of his recovery, a journey that remains difficult and uncertain. While I was pretty disoriented and confused, I was like, what is happening here, you know? Looks like I'm in the hospital. I like I'm in the hospital. I didn't even know what happened. My daughter just came to visit me, which is good. Went to three months, seven months. That was great. I felt so much better seeing them around, you know? And they're happy. They're both happy. She's like, ah, Daddy. I'm like, yes. She knows who I am. You know, it's okay. It's almost like he's in there, but he's in a prison. He's still him. He just can't communicate or express himself properly. Because I miss just going out for a walk or going to work. Dancing. 